Welcome to the Create Today podcast. This show is all about how you can create the life that you love one day at a time. And I'm your host, Karen Stanley, and my guest today is Stephanie Van Dam. She's the owner of Sandler by Clydesdale Performance Management, right? Yes. Oh, I had to practice that a couple times, and I'm so excited I got it right. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my gosh. So... One of the coolest things that I didn't know was going to be so awesome about doing a podcast is that it kind of forces my favorite people in the whole world, I say force in quotes, to come visit me in person. And I wanted to interview for her a long time. And she said, well, but I want to come visit you. So why don't we just do it here? And so here she is. And I couldn't be more thrilled. Yeah. Me too. It's fun to come visit. This is great. (laughs) So we're going to help businesses. Today is about sales, how we can, I hate the term close more business. That's not my favorite. Mm -hmm. How can we increase our clients or increase our sales? Sales are the the lifeblood of any business, any job, really. So I really want to talk today about to business owners and to salespeople who work in an organization how can we help them increase their performance, right? Yeah. Just like, why not? Um, first of all, how did you even get into sales? <laughs> and what's Sandler? I don't think a lot of people know what Sandler is. Yeah, for sure. So a uh, c- couple questions um, or a couple answers to that. First sales <laughs> oh, job, You're going to interview me I now? Probably, yeah. <laughs> okay. First, <laughs> first sales job I probably had was as a teenager working retail selling shoes to people. Ooh, um, I love at shoes. A store, and it. Um, I love shoes too, and it was all about the retail experience. So, like a lot of people, I was taught to sell features and benefits. This thing was waterproof, or this needed a certain thing, or this is you know performance wise of whatever mm. shoe, and that's what we were all taught. That was the training. What was the mm. feature? What was the advantage to that feature? What was the benefit? Mm. FAB. So a lot of people in sales have been taught that, and that's just been a, something throughout my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, working in communications, I worked for a, a national um, communications company, and that was their big thing about features and benefits. Same. Right? So the challenge, of course, today is that a lot of people, um, people love to buy things, but they hate to be sold. They do. So many of us now prefer uh, relationship building. We love to be able to build our client base through relationships. And the, and the only problem with that, of course, is that much of the sales training out there teaches people how to do the feature benefit thing without the um, relationship piece, mm. right? We want it, the idea is about closing people, top 10 closing, um, and nobody likes being closed. Nobody does. Yeah. And my husband, who runs a car dealership, as some of you might not know, he I have never heard, I've been in the car business doing marketing for car biz- dealers for 30 years. And he's the only person I've ever known in my entire career at that career to say, we don't close deals. We open relationships. Mm -hmm. And when he has sales meetings and he's talking, he, he hammers it and hammers it. We are not closing deals. We are opening relationships. Let's open some relationships. And it's, I've never heard anybody in the car business talk that way. And now you're talking that way too. Yeah. So when you're doing this, are you, did you, had you ever heard of Sandler before? Did you, is that a very popular or very I don't know. Yeah, it depends on where you are. Sandler Mm. is the largest sales training organization in the world. Wow. Um, There are over 200, 220 um, franchises. It's also a franchise model, and we're across across the world. Wow. So there are a lot of Sandler organizations. Sandler's been around for a long time, just over 50 years. Wow. So where I live in Canada, then it's less known, but there are some Mm. places in uh, the U.S. especially where Sandler's been around for a long time. We've got, we collectively as Sandler have had clients that have been with people for over 10 years as clients, Mm. um, over 20 for some. Mm. So it's, uh, it just depends on who it is. So Sandler was, um, gentleman, David H. Sandler, uh, started a sales training organization and um, realized a lot of times that he would show up to a business when he was selling, mm-hmm. he would show up to a business and it was almost like the buyer knew what his next move was going to be before he even made it. Mm. And that's when he started to realize that even though I, as a salesperson, have a system, I show up and I want to do all these things, 
Um, I might show up, do you know, an analysis of what it is you're looking for, and then I might give you a quote, you mm-hmm. know, or a proposal, presentation, whatever mm-hmm. you might call it. Um, and then I try to handle any objections that you might throw my way because I want to close, close you, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I attempt to close, handle those objections, and then um, I do follow up because typically the buyer system it flows right into that mm. where I'll say, I'll come in, do a needs analysis. Somebody buyer acts interested. Mm-hmm. And when they act interested, I give them all this information. Say, well, you know, aunt Mabel's got to help me buy the sofa or I've got a board of directors that I need to talk to. I've got right. some other decision maker that needs to come in. So I deflect, I deflect, I deflect. And, um, I, but I only deflect after I've gotten your proposal. Right. So I've got all that information and then I, as I refer to it, enter affectionately the witness protection program. <laughs> right? No. Right. So you get ghosted. The salesperson gets ghosted. Right. And then I follow up, follow up every two weeks, every two weeks, every two weeks. And as a buyer, what do we do? Avoid every single program or every call, every email, witness protection program. It's true. So we've wasted at the end of that whole process as a salesperson. I'm super frustrated, but my buyer got all my information they got my quote to be able to compare to whoever they need to or look up on the internet how they're going to solve the solution um, or or bring the solution themselves Mm. so that's where um, Sandler came in and said we know this system is recognizable Um, we've got to create a different system so we can understand what it is a customer really needs and um, and help them buy Mm. yeah and give that to him what he really needs is uh, Mr. Sandler uh, Canadian? No, is he American? no, he's an American. Oh, well, he is. he's passed now, but he's, yeah, yeah he was. Yeah, and I, th- I thought that he had passed Out away. Out of the Baltimore area. Oh, Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't read that. Yeah. Okay, so if we are used to the the model that you're talking about, um, and maybe there are people, business owners and salespeople that have, uh, have been either doing this type of model or they have heard of it, or they just really want to increase their productivity and grow their business and get more clients. Um, what's the, where do you start? Like, uh, yeah. it's, it seems like a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Obviously you train people for an entire year. Yeah. You know, it's not like you can, we can learn everything in five seconds, but, right. but we can give them some, I want to add some value and, and give them some tips. And so you're talking to me as a business owner. Yeah. And I have some leads coming in yep. um, and I would like to reach out to them and give as much value as I can and grow my business as fast as I can. Where do, what's, what's the first thing? Where do you start? Yeah, I would probably find out more about, it's less about what you sell mm. and more about the problems you solve. Mm. And so that's, our, we're not the first people to talk about mm-hmm. that, but it's not about um, producing a widget and that anything that you can do, you can probably boil down to, does it save somebody time or money or peace of mind, provides them some emotional um, relief. Mm. And if you're able to tap into that, mm. then um, then that's what's going to solve the problem for customers. So instead of thinking of, I sell a car and um, I'm selling this beautiful feature, leather interior, air conditioning, performance, whatever, horsepower, all of those features, yep. right? We're not selling those things. We're talking about safety. You're going to make sure that your kids, your family are getting home on time. That means that when you need to merge fast, then you can accelerate quickly. Mm-hmm. And so the feature is the acceleration. However, that's going to give you peace of mind when you're in an emergency situation to get away from something or mm-hmm. find your spot in the lane. Mm-hmm. So that's the problem we're solving right? It's not it. that, that feature. So identify whatever you're talking about for your features and benefits of your product mm-hmm. uh, or service, peel it back a little bit, take a few steps back and say, well, what emotional need does this solve? We talk a lot about mm-hmm. emotion, how people buy emotionally, and then they justify that purchase logically. Mm. All of us have done this at one point or another. I'm sure you've Anybody in a relationship has done this. We've gone out and we've bought a product. We got home and uh, we didn't really need the product, but then we convince our partner, we go, look what I bought today. Uh, it was on sale, honey. Yeah. I saved money, right? And so that's where that's we buy joke. it. Yeah. I tell John all the time, saving you money every day, honey, every day. <laughs> right? So we, <laughs> we, just, we buy uh, emotionally and justify logically. So our job in our salesperson role is to talk about 
how we can connect emotionally with someone. What frustration do we solve? Mm. What anxiety do we take away? What fear do we remove? Mm. Um, and then we justify it with some of that logic, which gets into features and benefits. You need them. They're important. They're just not important as early as we like to think they are. Oh. Yeah. So in what ways can we help uh, our potential you know, client, our potential relationship that we're trying to open? How do we, f- what's the best way to find that out? How, what's the best way to get that emotional connection? Doing exactly what you just did, Karen, which is ask a question. No right? way. <laughs> yes. yes. I get an A+. Plus. <laughs> so um, I don't know if anybody, for those of you who have watched and, and fallen <clears throat> in love with uh, Ted Lasso, oh. um, on uh, he's great. Get one of the first episodes he has, um, it's the dart scene. And I love that scene because he talks about, he says, get curious. Be curious, not judgmental. And Probably one of the biggest things, uh, mistakes I see salespeople or people who are in a sales role mm-hmm. make is we prejudge what our prospects need. We mm. prejudge what an answer to a question might be. We prejudge, we see someone and we think we might know what it is that they want or need. And uh, and we forget to ask questions or we stop asking them or we, st- we stop asking them um, before we, we need to, like we don't ask one more question, just one mm. more question. One more. So, yeah. And that, I think, is the key. So get curious, ask more questions, and don't just say, what's the problem and how do I solve that problem? It's what's the impact if I don't solve the problem? Mm. What's the impact to somebody if I walk away from this conversation? Does their problem get solved? If it does, what time does it save them? What money does it save them? Or what emotional need does it solve? Maybe it's a peace of mind thing. They might get home earlier to hang out with their kids for a football game, they might, you know, whatever it is for them, it it usually boils down to time, money, or peace of mind. Peace of mind, wow. What's usually, do you have a certain few questions-ish that you teach your, you know, your people to ask? I mean, is there somewhere, a best way to start? Yeah, well, can. We usually will start with, uh, somebody's going to talk to the understanding that a lot of buyers, when they come to us, they have a tr- like prospects typically have a very low trust level for a salesperson. Yeah. Right. So that's why we love referrals so much. Right. We love the relationship because if I have a relationship with someone like we do, then we or like anybody does, you tend to get deeper into conversations. Mm-hmm. Right. So then you can find out what somebody's looking for. Mm-hmm. So. Um, when you have very little trust, then you need someone's going to tell you a problem. Customers keep those problems very close. Mm. Right? They don't like to divulge that because they don't know you, they don't trust you. So I'm not going to give you everything. Got so it. it's to say, hey, well, you came to me with this problem. Tell me more about that problem. Can you give me a recent example? And so, and what have you tried to do to solve that problem already? Oh, uh, how much did that cost you? What have you invested? Mm-hmm. Um, time, money, resources. Mm-hmm. How long are you willing to, to deal with that? And once you ask some more of these questions, there's and we've got a series mm-hmm. of questions to ask, but once you get into that, then we can start attaching, well, if this problem, they've invested this much money in trying to solve it, which didn't work. Uh, they've been dealing with this with this um, for so long. Mm. Didn't work, mm. right? Didn't, didn't solve it. Now we can start getting time, money, peace of mind on the table and say, well, what's it worth to you to be able to have that go away? Right now we have a sense as to whether our solution and our price point is going to match up with what it is for them, what their budget is, what their um, interest is in solving the problem. Mm. Yeah. And what did you, what do you say if their answer is not, what you're providing is not going to be the best solution for them? If they say, I, it's worth, let's go back to the car because yeah. the car world is what I know. Uh, yes, I, it is worth $10,000 for me to serve that, that solve that problem. And there aren't any cars that are $10,000. You can't buy a $10,000 car anymore. And, and you go, oh, well, what do you do? <laughs> well, c- yeah, so if I have no options, can I, okay. in, in the car world, can I fix the problem? Can my service department fix the problem okay. for you? That could be an option. We'll just try to. Right, or... Sometimes you say no, you disqualify, it's just fine. right? And that's okay, that's right? Okay. There's not, you know, the, the proverbial uh, shake hands, part friends yeah. uh, conversation. So I think that that's um, saying no. One of the other 
strategies that's really important for us. And I say it's a, I call it strategy hesitantly because we, we really ought to be doing that as salespeople. If I can't solve a problem, why do I need to fit into some sort of like squeeze myself into a solution that doesn't serve me, doesn't serve my customer, Mm-mm. certainly doesn't serve my company, Mm-mm. ends up costing everybody more time, energy, and money, and we're usually frustrated at the end of it. So mm-hmm. why not say, actually, I don't think we can help you. Mm-hmm. But here, the best way for you to help somebody is to refer them to somebody who might be able to. Yeah. Right? And that's, you can, you can gain customers that way. Mm. because then when they do have a problem, like I remember how Karen treated me when I didn't have, she didn't have a solution for me. I trust her because she actually turned me away. Mm. She didn't try to convince me to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then sh- I'll come back. Yeah. Maybe right. five years later and they, their budget's a little bit bigger. They're more stable yeah. or whatever. They save some money or whatever. If it's all about relationship, yeah. then let's have a relationship. No matter what decisions are made. Yeah. Yeah. I love that yeah. approach. It's so awesome. What are the biggest challenges that you see the, the most regular pr- challenges or common problems that when you're teaching salespeople and you're training them, what are, the, what are their biggest challenges? Because they're probably everybody's biggest challenges, right? Yeah, so the... Okay, oh. so that's kind of... I'm just like, so what's the best thing to do here? To the other way? Or Towards you, yeah. Move it. Move it this way. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Is this better if I do it that way? Okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Common questions. So 18 minutes. Yep. So this is where probably in the sales capacity, the top three things that I see or people come to me with are Mm -hmm. saying, um, I can't. My, my, either from a management perspective, I can't get my team to go out and prospect. They would rather spend more time with my, their existing customer base than go out and prospect. And the biggest reason for that is because prospecting is hard, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's no, there's no um, flashy answer to that. No. Uh, prospecting is hard. And, and in today's world, it's because somebody's not at their phone anymore, right? Mm-hmm. That we used to have the desks. And now, obviously, the COVID's changed all of that. Everybody's at home at a cell phone, on a computer, whatever it is. They're not at necessarily a desk anymore. So nobody's answering the phone. Uh, People are getting inundated with emails. So your email is getting lost or they're getting so many email um, or LinkedIn requests and things like that. So the digital thing, here's what I'm seeing more as a solution to that. Here's your little uh, tip is that I hate to tell you cold calling is coming back. It's a pattern interrupt. Uh, It's a way nobody's calling anymore because they think nobody's at their phone, but some people are, mm -hmm. but nobody is calling. You want to do something different than everybody else? Start picking up the phone. Actually call. Right? Sending mail. I know that's been a a thing for a lot of people about sending handwritten notes. Um, Sending things in the mail. People like getting mail. They do. They like getting something with their name on it. And... So again, emails, everybody's sending emails, everybody's sending inboxes on LinkedIn. Um, And so that's what, if everybody else is doing it, this is a big part of what we talk about at Sandler. If everybody's doing it, do something different. You stop and do something different than we call it a pattern interrupt. Pattern interrupt. Yeah. 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 Who here wants 10 more emails a day? (laughs) Zero. Who here wants 10 more fucking text messages trying to sell me something? No one. Um, you know, I don't even want to buy from people that have like the 10% discount. If you give us your email address and your text number. And I'm just like, this is, I don't even want to do business with you because I don't want your texts. And just since I'm on a soapbox right now, (laughs) it happens to be my birthday month. And guess how many extra emails I get? Right. I don't want them. I mean, I know it's nice and they're trying to do good marketing and I've been in marketing forever and I get it and that's cool. But do you, do we really want 10 more emails that say, it's your birthday, yeah. come buy from us and we'll give you, you know, $5 or whatever. Yeah. Even if it's a great discount, it's just, I, it's we're inundated. I am inundated. All of us are, yeah. right? So I love that. Just actually picking up the phone and actually, you know, it's like, what do you say when we're, let's talk cold calling and then let's get back to, okay, we have leads coming in. Let's yeah. how we can nurture those relationships. Sure. Yep. What is the first thing you say? <laughs> I, I haven't cold called ever. 
And yeah, I never, so, I never will. <laughs> right. So, so here are the things that I don't want you to say. Okay. I don't want you to say, uh, hi, uh, it's Stephanie Van Dam calling from Sandler Training. Uh, may I speak to Karen Stanley? Okay. Um, the, when you say last name, mm-hmm. it screams salesperson. Oh. Because someone who's familiar with you will never call you like that. Brilliant. So what I would likely say is something like, um, hi, Karen. And you would suspiciously say, uh, yeah. yes. And I'm like, hi, Karen, Stephanie calling from Sandler, guessing both of those names are meaningless to you. I mean, because we're friends, I know they're not, but let's pretend. And so uh, guessing those names, the, either of those names ring a bell, you're probably going to say, no, they don't. No, click. Like, no. Just kidding. <laughs> so, um, no problem. Wanted to take 30 seconds, tell you why I called. You can let me know if we should keep talking or not. Is that fair? And most, and that's it. So yes. Say, I wait for somebody to do that. And they're that's like, fair. timer's going. Okay. You know? All right. Um, I'll give you 30 seconds. Perfect. And then I've got a predetermined, yeah. um, I'm going to say script, but once you practice it enough, it becomes more of a talk track, I yeah. can say. And so you, um, you develop it to make it sound like you versus like me, if I was to provide one. So you come up with what we refer to as pain statements. So I'd say, here are the three challenges that you know, when people work with me, it's because of reason A, reason B, reason C. Mm. Karen, I'll stop there. <laughs> I don't know if any of those are a challenge for you or your team, but does it make sense for us to continue the conversation? And the best thing when I say I stop there is now Karen knows that um, when I said it was going to be 30 seconds, she's going to like, thank goodness, she's stopping. It builds trust mm. because I've, I've done what I said I was going to do. Literally, right. don't take 30 more seconds. Yeah, no. so I'm, I'm going to stop there. Stop at 30. Don't know if those are relevant to you, but um, do they resonate with you or your team? And you're going to say, actually, yes, they do. Perfect. Which one? Mm. And then I get you talking. We have a conversation. Mm. Right? It's all about. And the goal for us anyway, when we talk about for most people, most of us don't have a one call close. Mm. Right? When I say that, like that we don't, we're not going to call somebody, have a conversation the first time, and that's going to bring them uh, on board with no. us. So um, for us, the goal of that initial call, that cold call, that lead generation call, is really just to get another conversation. That's the only thing. Your, your sale in that conversation is to get another conversation. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And what I was thinking as you're saying that is that as a salesperson, it's an uncomfortable thing. For everybody, I don't think nobody, I don't think anybody is born right out of the womb saying, I'm going to cold call the rest of my life. Nobody wants, it's, it's not that we don't want to, it is uncomfortable to call someone you don't know. Well, for most people, right? I mean, we, um, our parents, right? What did they say? Strangers, strangers, don't talk to strangers. strangers. Yes. And now you're in a professional world where like money depends on you talking to strangers. All of a sudden I'm calling them. Yeah. So, of course, like, that's a natural, that's a very natural thing. So, for us, when we talk about those challenges, we approach sales and development of of an individual Mm. three different ways or or tackling tackling three different sides. Mm. What are the behaviors you need to do, activities that you need to do every day, week, month? Mm. Do you have a goal? Do you have a plan, short-term, long-term? And are you revisiting that plan? Mm -hmm. Um, what are the tactics and techniques that you're using? So what I just described with a pattern interrupt specific Mm -hmm. techniques of a cold call, um, what are those techniques? And then what's your mindset, right? right? Mindsets. And we all know somebody who was gifted as an athlete, a musician, some technique they were just gifted at, but you know what? Their attitude sucked. Mm -hmm. And so they were never successful because they just had a really poor attitude. Mm -hmm. So when in sales, we get told no an awful lot. Mm -hmm. So, how do we, if somebody yells at us, if somebody hangs up the phone, how do we not no worry deal. about it? No yeah. big deal. We just know we're closer to getting to the next person. But I like how you're saying we're not, our, our objective is not to close a deal you know, on the one phone call. No, it's always been the relationship anyway. Yep. And it also takes that pressure and some of the uncomfortable. I'm just going to see, I'm just going to talk to somebody. I'm just going to see yeah. what's going on with that person and what do they need and see if, whatever it is, and see what the problems are, see if I could solve any of them, right? Yep. And then to say that I, all I'm doing here is to see if it makes sense to have another conversation. It's kind of like, oh, kind of takes the yeah. pressure off, doesn't it? You're asking permission to ask a question. That's all you're doing. And if you want to hear from me, great. If not, right. also cool. Ask permission to ask a question. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Cool. And most people say yes. Like in my career of making cold calls, 
I do less now than I did before, but mm-hmm. in my career making cold calls, very few people say no to the, can I take 30 seconds to, um, or I want to take 30 seconds mm. to um, ask you a question. They're like, okay. All right. Yeah. Everybody has 30 seconds. Yeah. That's cool. I love that. And I've never had any single salesperson. I have had thousands and thousands and thousands of people call me, salespeople call me, try to sell me something. And I get 100 emails a day on LinkedIn. And um, no one's ever said that to me. Can I have 30 seconds? Yeah. And that's it. I, and, if, and if they had, I'd be like, all right. <laughs> right? I have 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, um, what we're scared of as business yeah. people is somebody wasting our time. Yes. Right? So if somebody says that I have a minute, even if someone said to you, hey, can I take 60 seconds? You probably would also say yes, because that's a finite amount of time. Yes. Our biggest fear is someone's going to say, hey, can I take a moment? Now, a moment is difficult because a moment is, for some people, that's one minute. For some people, that's five. And that's a big variance. Yeah, it is. Right? All business owners want, we do want more efficiencies, right? We want to make more money. So if you can make my life easier, simpler, I am happy to engage you in a conversation. Yes. Right? My fear is that you're going to try and waste my time. Mm -hmm. So how do we as salespeople try to ensure that we're not wasting somebody's time? Yeah. um, And that we have respect of the customer's time. If you want, as a salesperson, your customer or prospect to respect your time, Mm -hmm. you also need to respect theirs. Mm. And that's a big part. It is a big part. I think we can all relate to that. Everybody has way too many things on their to-do list. In every day, every person in this world. And it's just like, no, I don't have time. No, I don't have time. I mean, it's just like, I don't want to have the time. So if you can respect my time and just do what it is in 30 seconds, yeah. boom, that'd be amazing. Right? Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that so much. <laughs> Thanks for not wasting my time, Stephanie. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> um, okay. Now, I know you can't give a sales training 101 in, you know, 20 minutes, right. but... We all have clients, we have current clients, and maybe past clients. Maybe you could give us some te- some tips on what would be some of s- some suggestions for people that have done business with us in the past, mm-hmm. and maybe we haven't done a good job at following up and checking in on them and saying hello and happy birthday or uh, you know some of the standard sales follow up things. Um, what are some tips? What are some things that we can do to nurture that relationship, maybe if they are in the past? Um, and then we'll get to current clients. Sure. So, well, maybe maybe um, we can get to same? current clients. Well, we okay. can do a little bit of both. Okay. I think that there's, first of all, one of the biggest things that I see um, businesses not to do is segment their clients. Mm. So here's a strategy I'll give you, an acronym, CARE, K-A-R-E. Mm. Uh, what clients do you want to keep? What people mm. you have so here's your best client is your competitor's best prospect mm. your best client is your competitor's best prospect so who if they called you up and said i've gone to somebody else would you be, you know it'd be a gut punch mm-hmm. those people when was the last time you spoke to them mm-hmm. so what clients do you want to keep these people usually have the, they're at a maximum spend with you mm-hmm. for whatever reason they're at maximum spend with you you like working with them mm-hmm. Um, they're pretty low maintenance as far as they're not, you know, calling you every single day about something Mm -hmm. and you like talking to them. They match and align with the values you have Mm -hmm. as a company. Who do you want to keep? Next one's who do you want to attain? The A stands for attain or acquire. Mm -hmm. So what new logos do you want to bring under your umbrella? Mm -hmm. And what are your top 10, 20, 50, depending on the size of your company? Right. Um, who do you want to bring on? Right. Mm -hmm. And what is your ideal client profile? so much information about ideal client profile, but yeah. making sure, A, do you know what it is for you? And uh, have you identified it? And do you have, have you identified clients that fit that, like specific companies, not just demographic features? Um, the next one's uh, R is stands for recapture. So you just talked about that. Mm. What are the previous clients that we did have? Now they stopped buying for us for one reason. Maybe they just left. We don't know. Maybe we ignored them. Maybe um, something bad happened and we need to apologize. Maybe they were big jerks. They left. We don't want to touch them again. Yeah. Right? We're happy to. the same values. Yeah. Um, And then who are, E stands for expand. So who are my existing clients that aren't using everything that I have? Maybe not all of my product Mm. lines. Maybe I only have one instead of all five or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Or could be purchasing more often Mm -hmm. from me. Mm. 
Um, so this could be a referral. Some people might only have, you know, they buy something once from every 10 years, right, from you. So yeah. um, who do I want to get more referrals from? Yes. So um, so when, it lo- when you look at that, the strategies typically for attain and expand um, can be similar, or attain and recapture, pardon me, can be similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you have your keeps and your expands are similar strategies. Mm. So specific to answer your other question, which was what can we do? A, when are you calling them? How often are you calling them? Mm-hmm. The best thing I can ask is, or um, suggest is ask what they want. Mm-hmm. How often? To keep our relationship great, how often would you like to hear from me? Mm. What a concept. Right? <laughs> ask them. So so, sometimes, I know. Instead of just assuming, I think we all just assume so much to your first point right out of the gate. Yeah, and some people say, what determines success in our relationship? Mm. Some people, um, I've had a client where uh, I need to keep my accounting department happy, which means I need a detailed invoice and I need it on time. That's what they needed. Okay. My accounting team is happy, then I am happy. And we're like, okay. For some people, it's completely different. Right. They want to be wined and dined. Yeah. Some people just want a quarter day, just check in every three months. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dinner or something. Whatever it is. Like it's, it's, we don't, I think business owners, it's, it's tough sometimes because we have so many other things to do. Mm -hmm. But my philosophy is that your first day of onboarding is your first day of retention. Mm. So do we have a way when we onboard a client, Mm. have we included, so systemize this, have we included a couple of questions about how do we want um, our relationship to develop, mm. right? How often do you want to hear from me? Or if you decide this, you're going to hear from me every quarter. Let's get those dates in a calendar now. Mm. Set that up at the Brilliant. beginning. So you both have calendar invites and you're having a, a Zoom call, a phone call, whatever it is for you. Um, so it's already in the calendar. You won't forget if it's in the calendar. Mm. Right? So good. Yeah. My mind is just exploding right now with all these ideas of all the things that we could do. Yeah. Because you can have coffee and like really actually develop that relationship and spend actual time, even if it's on the phone. You might be, you might have a, you know, working from home and you might have clients all over the country or something like that. But, you know, if you have local clients, you can actually put things, actual activities in the calendar if yeah. that's what they want. Right. And ask them. Because I think about my young life in advertising at the big firm that I worked for. I I just assumed everything. I assumed they wanted to go to dinner. I assumed they wanted me to bring them wine at Christmas time. I assumed that they want, I thought what would be really cool. And then I just gave it to them or I did it or I scheduled it or, and I'm just thinking of all those times. I wonder if that's really what they wanted. I mean, they seem to have a good time. You know, it's like, who's turning down wine, but you know what I mean? Like, is that really what they wanted? Well, I don't know. Maybe even a bigger impact, of course, is you speak to, uh, spoke of Christmas time. Yeah. Um, not everybody celebrates Christmas. Right. And if we're wanting, who else gets stuff at Christmas time? Everybody sends things at Christmas time. So everybody. if we want to, I had somebody tell me this once. They um, talked about a story of the day after Christmas, everybody comes in, you know, everybody's got the line of Christmas cards up on the desk, like yeah. the, the receptionist's office, right? And so what they did, they came in. All the Christmas cards come off the table, right? So you know what happens? This guy decided to send a card the beginning of January. Happy New Year's. That card stayed up there forever because there was no moment where we did the whole, let me get rid it's of the over now. cards. Yeah. Hmm. So it just stayed. Smart. So if you're wanting a bit of a, just staying power, is yeah. there something else that you can do? Some mm. people who are big, um, like a lot of IT folks tend to be Trekkies, right? So they send things on, on May the 4th. Oh my right, gosh. As their, instead of their end of year yes. gift or it's Star Wars. Yeah, they do maybe. May the, the fourth, fourth be, be with you. you. Yeah. Yes. I have so my old sister in law got married on May the fourth oh, be with you. That's easy to remember. <laughs> so funny. So yeah, how can you and what aligns with your brand, right? Are we sending a gift at the end of the year simply because that's what we think we ought to do? Mm-hmm. Or because does it align with our brand? Mm. Right? Is there another time of year that we can send something mm. um, where we don't need to compete for attention? Um, that just has a bigger staying power. Right. Yeah. I mean, just I was just keep thinking now, so I'm just like, if somebody's really patriotic and they love America, then you can send Fourth of July presents. Absolutely. Or, or some, not everybody drinks, so wine is not very great. It's right. not always the best idea. Yeah. Or, 
you know, it's just, it's just funny. Uh, you're making me think back to, you know, my entire career and all the things I could have done better. Well, uh, all hands out for the rest of us, right? Okay. The same, so. All right. All right. Yeah, we keep learning sure. and learning. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about the mindset piece because we all need mindset help. We all need to, you know, we need to be in a proper mindset and always be improving and always work on personal development for us to be our best selves and to, to really do what we're capable of, right? Yep. Um, what sorts of things seem to make the biggest amount of impact on the people that you train, um, that you're, t- you know, you're training? What are the things that seem to help them the most? So the short answer is it depends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What generally works um, is journal writing. Hmm. Now, for those um, watching at any time, I don't mean journal writing as in like Dear Diary, you know, I had a peanut butter sandwich today. Like that's (laughs) not the journal. Kevin in accounting is really cute. Yeah. (laughs) So that's not what I'm talking about. Not that? Oh, that won't help us. So um, here's another acronym for you in terms of journal writing. Now, the the trouble with journal writing is that, number one, it it requires a little consistency. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, for it to be truly effective. Yeah. The other part is that because when I say journal writing, many people just get this huge, well, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Um, now you can Google journal writing and say like yeah. a thousand results will come up. Um, so I'll give you an, a technique that you can use, but if this doesn't work for you, find something else. Like if you just right. write down the, like one thing that you're grateful for in a given day, better versus Brilliant. nothing, that's awesome. Um, but the acronym that I use is bagels and it's sort of, um, kind of like the food, right? Hmm. But with an extra G. I love so, bagels. <laughs> so what you can do is talk about bagels. So B stands for behavior. So this is what you need to do, um, in a given day. What do I need to do in the coming day? So regardless of when you write your journal, mm. let's pretend it's in the morning. Mm-hmm. So what are the behaviors I need to do today? Mm. Somebody might call this a critical task list. I know um, Andy Frazella talks yep. about critical tasks. So what are the key things? Now everybody loves the to-do list, right? And most of us do. The trick with a to-do list is that we tend to do the things that are easiest first, Right. The problem with that is by the time we get to the end of the day when we're most tired is when the things that happen that create the most momentum in our business. So what I want you to do is once you create your task list in general, what are the top priorities? If you have more than five, they're not priorities. Mm. Just saying. So take those top five things um, and put those to the top of your list. Those are the behaviors that you would put in your behavior part of the journal. Mm. Um, E stands for expectations. What are the things, um, uh, let me start there. E, start again, we'll cut that out. E stands for evaluation. So compared to um, yesterday, how did I do with my activities, right? What did, on a one to 10, oh my God, I can ease so later. It's bagel, it's ba- bagels, a, right? Okay, hold a. on. Hang on. That's 39, about 39. Okay. So uh, A is your affirmations. Okay. Now, I don't mean affirmations as in like, I want a million dollars. I am amazing. I mean, you are amazing. But what I'm talking about are things like I am a productive, efficient, focused salesperson. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we say that in you're the best version of you, what are those statements that you say? Mm -hmm. And could be one, could be three, could be five. I am the most uh, dedicated selfless manager out there. Mm. My team loves to work with me every day. Mm. Those are more powerful or more impactful affirmation statements. Mm -hmm. So what are those statements? G then stands for what are your goals? The first, there's two G's. The first G is what are your goals? These are short term. In this case, it's a short term. What are your monthly, weekly, no more than a year? And it's really just a reminder for you to be like, when I'm having a sucky day, because we all have those, when I'm having a sucky day, what am I motivated to do? And so when I keep writing what my goals are, then I have that. Uh, second G, now we're going to shift into the second half. And these are the things that happened before, the things that might have happened the day before. So mm. what am I grateful for? I have a moment of gratitude. What am, and this, folks, this is not anything big, right? This is, doesn't need to be a huge thing for a big sale. This could be, I'm grateful that I saw the hummingbird at the feeder before I walked in here today. Very, could be anything small. Uh, grateful that the sun is shining or that the rain happened. doesn't matter. Right. What are you grateful for? 
Then we get into E, which is evaluation. Mm. So compared to yesterday, remember those affirmation statements? How did I do on those affirmation statements? If I am a focus-driven salesperson, ambitious salesperson, if that's what I've written as my affirmation statement, how did I do yesterday compared to that? Was I that? Mm. Did I show up as that ambitious, focus-driven salesperson? Out of 10, how did I do there? This is not a judgment exercise. It's just an awareness exercise. Mm. So because the more we're aware of how we did, then we tend to catch ourselves when we're not being that. So we then shift into doing behaviors mm. that get us to that point. Love it. So evaluation. And then we have lessons learned. So mm. what lessons did I learn uh, from the day before? Maybe I learned that um, I work better from home. Maybe I realized that the lessons learned is I thought I could work from home, but the dishwasher and laundry took priority and mm -hmm. I missed three hours of my day, mm -hmm. right? And I need to be in an office. Maybe the lessons learned is um, I can't ask everybody how they are on the way in because mm. then I lose an hour of my time as I walk to my desk. Whatever that is for you, what's your lesson learned from the day before? And then we have S because we like bagels, plural, right? Mm -hmm. What are the successes that I had yesterday? Mm. So Love let's um, do, because as business owners, man, do we beat ourselves up um, well, right? And so I have a, a friend of mine that says, if you're going to beat yourself up, use a feather, not a bat, mm. right? So what are your successes that you had the day before? Yeah. So that's bagels, behaviors, um, affirmation, uh, gratitude, or goals, gratitude, uh, evaluation, lessons learned, and success. That's wild, because I, when did we meet? 20, 2019? Yep, I think, think so. so. Yep. I think it was 2019. And at that time, I was working on designing a planner because I wanted to create a yep. planner that I that had everything that I wanted in it. I couldn't find one, yep. so I designed my own. And I've gone through several different versions of it. And the final version, it has gratefuls. Yep. It has wins from yesterday. It's not exactly bagels with two Gs, but it's wild. Yep. Your goals and your affirmations your critical tasks, I don't call it critical tasks, the most important task, yep. and it's five, it's one through five, mm -hmm. and then I separated it out, it's to-do list is the rest of that. So where, where can you get this, this journal? What in the world? <laughs> I don't even sell them, I give them to my clients. <laughs> but I probably will put them on my website at some yeah. point. But uh, yeah, I give them to my coaching and, and hypnotherapy clients to, so that, to help them with their, this daily thing, and you're just, just, the only thing I'm missing is the evaluation and, what I les and, I, and the lessons that I learned. But there's a place for notes. You can write that there. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool, though. Yeah. That's amazing. I've never, you've, we, we've we never know. talked we about this. Plan about, we didn't no. plan this ahead of I've time. known her five years. I've never known about the bagels oh. with two Gs. <laughs> I didn't know that. It's amazing. But I, your journal has ever, I mean, truly, like, almost no the, jokes. Almost like the whole thing. Yeah. Like, weird, wacky, wild. That's awesome. Anyway. Yeah. Whew. Um, so that's the biggest. So great to today journal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. We don't have any ads in this show, but did I tell you about the Great Today yeah. Journal? No, I, I'm Sponsored not even for by. sale. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, that's a big, so the, we talk about mindset stuff and that's the big one because the, here's the yeah. thing. If we're going to talk about prospecting, yeah. if we're going to talk about, I've sent out a hundred emails and I haven't heard anything back. Um, if we're going to talk about, I need to do a behavior that's outside of my comfort zone. And that, it varies. So for me, I can go to a million networking events. It's fine. You ask me to fill out a spreadsheet or do some detailed work. I'm uncomfortable with that. Mm. Some people though, if you're an introvert, going to a networking event or a trade show is a comfort zone buster so for you. Anxiety. Right? So we need to be able to um, stay on top of that. So that doing the journal, when you create those things and do that consistently, mm. that supports you in that mm. space. Um, the other part, of course, is to come up with ways when you are feeling uncomfortable. Sometimes it means you need to take five minutes, mm. you know, stop, walk away and have another conversation. You know, just walk away from whatever you were doing so that you can regroup and come back. Right. Yep. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. Back to the K-A-R-E. Yeah. After we've, sorry, I'm all over the place. There's so many things I want to cover. After we've kind of categorized those people and put, put our clients, our current clients, our current database or whatever it is kind of in those categories. I don't think we came back and talked about the ease. No. K A R expands expands. Did we yeah. talk about expands uh, a little bit, but we okay, can go okay. back to it. <laughs> so we kind of talked about the let's go, tell me the, what those are again. K is keep 
Oh, we want to keep them. Okay. Yep. A is um, attain. Attain. Yeah. So we R. don't know these yet. No, these are the people that we prospect. Okay, we are prospecting, yeah. but they are strangers or no? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, R, R is a recapture. We want to recapture them. The clients we've had before. Okay. And left us for whatever reason. It doesn't need yeah. to. We presume all of us. We do, we tend to doomsday think, right? So we all think the people who left us because they were upset with us, but it doesn't need to be. Yeah. Could be, Maybe. but yeah. it could, could be a million different things. Yeah. And then then the last one is expands. Expands. Okay. So what are some other things that we didn't, because I switched subjects, that we didn't talk about that can help them after we get into these different categories? Yeah. So when we've got those categories, um, I would then examine, um, it's easy for us as business people to, to systemize everything, to develop a process for how we're going to connect with them. Right. So um, you can do that. A lot of CRMs um, can do... Uh, like automatic. Uh, yeah, some automatic. Now, the thing about you can't automate everything. No. Automation is easy for us, not great for the client experience. Mm-mm. So there's got to be a blend of both. When like I'm talking about the happy birthday emails. Those right. are all automated. I've gotten 100 of them so far. And yeah. I, it's still two more weeks till my birthday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when we're in that space, what are the... We want to look at how often do... We, what's our cycle of communication? Yeah. So when we're, we're talking about developing a cadence... Here, it, regardless of who you're trying to talk to. So mm. what, who's your cadence for? Once you've decided that, then you say, well, how long is my cadence? So for a prospect, it might be 21 days, mm. right? That's your cadence. Once you finish day 21, you start again on day one. Um, for uh, an expand client, it might be a, a 365, a one-year cadence. So I'm going to mm. communicate with those people throughout the year, year one half or day one of 365, I start the cycle over again. So as I decide what that cadence is, then I'm going to develop different touch points throughout that cadence. Mm. Um, And the more I can automate things as a business owner, the better they are. But I would pick things like, what are the different tactics I want to use? Phone call, email, text message, video call. Nobody does video call or very few people do video, but it's probably the most watched thing. People love to watch videos. Mm -hmm. Um, Am I going to provide a gift? Is there a card that I'm going to send? Um, am I going to visit them? So there are several different communication modalities that we can use, which we decide which ones we are going to use and when that's going to happen. We can then create, um, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet or project management software that you can get, put those in there. If you want to use your CRM to do that, beautiful. Put the task in there or get a VA if you don't have a, an assistant yet. Put the task in there so that you know when those things are going to happen. Automate what you can. Humanize obviously the things yeah. that you want to humanize. Um, and that's the best way for you to get in touch with people if you're going to expand with them. Uh, further to the point, I think a lot of people presume when we're operators in our business, we know every product and service we offer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liken this to the moment that we walk up to uh, a place to do our coffee order. If you're somebody who orders coffee every time, every day on your way to work, we know what coffee we want. The moment somebody says, well, I don't know what coffee we want, or let's pretend they don't have that coffee. Then we suddenly look at the freaking menu because we don't know. All of a sudden, the menu is new yeah. to us. We have no idea what's on there. Or if you're hungry, you may not know what food they have, even mm-hmm. though you've ordered from that place every day for however many days in a row. Right. Maybe you've never ordered food. Right. So we presume our customers know everything we, we offer, mm. and they don't. Because mm. they're just as busy as we are. Right? right. They don't know. And so it's important for us to have touch points and say, want to revisit why did you decide to do business with us to begin with? Mm. We've solved that problem because people forget pain, right? When they signed on to solve a problem, they were in an amount of pain. Right. Right. To solve the problem. So they forget. Now you've solved why. it. Why? They don't have that pain anymore. You have to remind them why and then say, okay, well, what else is going on? Tell me what else is going on in your world. Mm. Um, what's happening in the next one, three years? Mm right? What are the challenges that you're seeing? How can we maybe support you Mm. in that way? Um, If you could have fill in the blank, what would that be? Uh, The line that a lot of people use is, if I could wave a magic wand Mm -hmm. and provide something for you, what would that look like? Right. Oh, did you, if we could do that, that would be useful. Yeah. And then they're like, oh my gosh, yes. Well, we actually do do that. Yeah. And my bad for not asking earlier. They might not know. You know? Um, Excellent point. Having those conversations and those touch points, we cannot automate. It's easy. I get it. saves time, but we can't automate all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's a combination of relationship building and conversations to be able to. Well, I would say, well, you 
can automate everything, but that's not building a relationship. It's like, it's not as effective. It's just, no. it's just not. No, right? that's why you get your 100 emails, your 100 yes. LinkedIn things, your text messages. Unsubscribing, and unsubscribing, unsubscribing. We, just, we, we don't, our brains as humans, we just can't handle, it's an overwhelm it's of much. information. Yeah. And so it's not personal, um, it's just too much. Yeah, it's way too much. So I don't even like going on LinkedIn, but <laughs> I mean, a lot of people have great, they, have, mm-hmm. they love LinkedIn, they stuff. and at the same time, I got a personal email that was from he saw me on LinkedIn. It was yeah. from LinkedIn. I could see it. Hey, I have created this. I noticed that you're a hypnotherapist. I have put together a whole website of natural, holistic, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, he, and I was like, hmm, well, that's cool. But it was personalized. And it wasn't just on LinkedIn. He actually sent it to my email. And it was, it, it was very personalized. Yeah. And it was very interesting to me. It did end up it, you know, responding. I've a thousand of them. I never don't respond. I've never responded to any of them except for this one. And I was like, Hmm, actually I do want that. And that would be really beneficial and that would be awesome. And so, you know, also it, it can work, but it has to, it, he's kind of used all of the things that you've said, yeah. you know, just very, very, uh, very cool. Um, okay. So I printed off. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. <laughs> I, print, I wasn't even planning on doing this. This is hilarious. I, sh- I was doing this for Stephanie. I, was, I have this, uh, this program that you can uh, download the most searched questions related to your industry. So for me, you know, I put in coaching or hypnotherapy or, you know, marketing, whatever it is that your industry is. And then you put in a question, you put in the industry. They will tell you every, the most popular questions asked. So if you, as you're building content, if you're blogging, you know, it's great for SEO. Um, you can answer those questions and uh, show up, you know, get higher rankings on Google and all these things. It's marketing benefits. Great. Great for content for social media. So I thought, well, I'll do it for her. And then I sent it, I gave her this list yesterday. And then she was just like, are these the questions you're going to ask me? And I was like, <laughs> I should ask you some of these questions <laughs> and you're about to learn why. Yeah. Okay. And it's cool. so small. I can barely read it. <laughs> it's tiny. Um, yes. I, my eyes are le- My eyes are getting worse and worse and worse. Um, the number one, are salespeople born or made? Ooh, good. This is a good question. So this traditional sales system and a lot of traditional business owners, I say traditional, you're old. Um, will think that salespeople are born. Because the idea was that if you were a charismatic person, Mm -hmm. that that just meant that people wanted to buy from you. Yeah. Now, that can be true, right? That's not separate. That's not exclusive. However, what that also means, the people who tend to be very charismatic also are also very distracted Mm -hmm. or very convincing, can be kind of aggressive, like the stereotypical salesperson that we don't want to buy from. Mm -hmm. So... um, we find that salespeople are more made than born, hmm. right? Because there are specific techniques, especially as our buyers become more experienced in that traditional mm-hmm. selling buyer system that um, I mentioned earlier. Uh, there are techniques that can be taught, right? To say that people, right. how to develop the relationship, what kind of things are we looking for? Are we communicating in the way that our prospect wants us to communicate in, not in the way that we communicate best? Um, and then what techniques are we f- asking questions? Are we finding out what's important to them, not just what's important to us? So, yeah, salespeople um, most certainly not are made. born that way. Uh, absolutely. And you don't have to necessarily be outgoing and charismatic to grow your business with sales. No. I, no. Not at all. At all. At all. I think that's a myth a lot of people believe. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, <laughs> second incredibly small print question. Um are salespeople smart? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't question. that hilarious? There's so many people that well, are searching okay. that. So, <laughs> is that not indicative, right? I mean, of salespeople in, in, as, as a whole. Yes. Um, so, here's an interesting stat um, that the short answer to that is it depends. <laughs> but the longer, I'd like to say yes is the answer to that. Um, because most often, sales, true salespeople need to be experts in their product chosen product service that they're selling yeah. also human behavior the good ones are yes right? 
Now, what's interesting, though, is that there's a study, and I can't remember it, um, where the study was from, but it was the idea what percentage of customers believe that their salesperson understands their needs. And most people, when I ask this question, give me anywhere from roughly 30 to 50%. Yeah. What did I guess yesterday? 50. I, I guessed 50. It's 13. Like, that's one three. That's insane. And it that's thirteen percent of people. Say it again. Thirteen percent of people. Customers. The customers believe that their salesperson understood their needs, and that's probably based on their experience. Hundred percent of eighty-seven percent of all salespeople they've come in context. They don't even know what their needs are and didn't even ask. They didn't ask, and they're selling features and benefits. Of course, they believe so that. Why do we still keep yeah. selling features oh my and gosh. benefits and talking about our company? Right. Um, because we know it's, it's not working. No. But that's just what we, we as salespeople collectively, much of the training out there still talks about that. Um, we often believe that that still happens. And truth be told, what happens is that as a business owner, let's pretend where we've started and we're selling to somebody, um, we have a conviction about our product or service as a business owner, and that's what sells. It's not the features and benefits. It's that when you know you're dealing with a business owner and they're, uh, relating to you emotionally about well, here's my story, here's why I started my, my business to solve this problem, that's what you're selling, right? You're solving the problem, not the actual features and benefits. So yeah. um, so are salespeople smart? Uh, I'd like to say yes, but I I mean, I think it really depends. <laughs> some people some people are not, and um, ego, but the I good think, ones are. In. The good ones are, for yeah. sure. Yeah. The good ones love people and they actually care. Yeah. Like my husband. I mean, he doesn't sell. Yeah. He loves people. He he sells. I mean, the people come to him for years and years, decades and decades and decades. Yeah. Every single day. Hey, this is so-and-so. I sold him a car back in Mitsubishi, at so Lugra Mitsubishi in 1992. Right. Literally, that happens every day. It's not uncommon. It's all the time. And they just love him. And he's always given them exactly what they need. He gives, yeah. does goes above and beyond. He's been delivering cars to people's homes since before there were even cell phones and pagers. And I'm serious. Yeah. He's, he would drive over there. Hey, what do you think? And he didn't even think twice about it. Whatever it is that could help them save time, yeah. save money, and peace of mind. And I want to clarify or separate between, there's a difference between saving money and offering mm -hmm. a discount. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, it's you can save money, but it's um, saving money from what you were doing before. This is right. not about providing a discount to right. somebody. Right? Yes. We want Thanks to create for value. That. And when we build relationship, when we solve an actual problem, then we don't actually have to discount. No. Right? Like, the, there's negotiation. Don't get me wrong. But sure. there's um, the the auto discount mm -mm. frustrate me because mm -mm. if it tells me that you priced your product incorrectly and that it's you like don't Kohl's. believe it's what your value the value that you offered is does anybody believe that anybody buys anything at regular price at Kohl's I haven't been to Kohl's in a long time but I when I used to go my kids are small yeah. and I used to buy clothes there because everything's always 60 percent off right I mean it's a joke every single yeah. thing is 60 percent off or 40 percent off or 50 percent off nothing's ever regular price why do they do that? It drives me nuts. Yeah, just and what um, Black Friday is like, we all saw a bunch of signs where people was like, the day before, you just change the sign, call it Black Friday, Yeah, and we think it's a deal, right? And, mm -hmm. and then people wonder why we don't trust salespeople. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. There was all kinds of that on Instagram this year. Yeah. And they pretended it was a lower price, and it was actually exactly the same as it was the day before. Well, on Thanksgiving, probably weren't open. Okay. Um... Are salespeople sociopaths? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Some Lots of for them. punishment sometimes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Depends on the day. Hopefully not as many, but yes. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it's so funny. Just, okay, this is my favorite one because it's not a question. It's just a statement. Salespeople are the worst. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, not the good ones. Okay. Some are, for sure. Why are salespeople so annoying? I, this is the best. Okay, so I have a really good story about this. So when, okay, get with me. We're, we're, yeah, my legs fall asleep. Got to cut across legs. Okay, so I have to stay close to the mic. Um, I think personally, so I'm going to compare to a personal situation okay. to begin with, which is I think personally we always have a friend or somebody in our lives that at one point 
they showed up to our lives and started to talk about some drama filled situation. Mm. Right, they're complaining about how negative their life is. Me, me, me. This is bad. My mm. uncle did this. My brother did this. My partner did this. My life is horrible. Mm-hmm. And you know what? As someone, as your friend, as their friend, you would say, you know what? That's okay. I'm here for you. I love you. Mm-hmm. Vent. Right? Beautiful. Now, second time that happens, um, they have a conversation. Again, my life is horrible. Somebody's doing this. I'm always a victim. Blah, blah, blah. Se- you're like, oh, God, okay, well... It's a, it's a rough patch, right? Still love you. You're my friend. It's all good. Mm-hmm. The third time, you start questioning in your mind. You're like, well, are you going to ever ask a question about me, maybe? Mm-hmm. Like, friendship is a two-way street, mm-hmm. right? So if you're going to keep showing up and talking about you all the time, I'm probably not going to spend as much time with you. Probably not. Right? I'm going to avoid your calls. Avoid your, maybe not book as much time with you. I'm just going to start avoiding and separating myself from you because you don't care about me. It's not a relationship. So I'm going to ask you, as a salesperson, if you are the salesperson, are you that friend that keeps showing up to your client's place Mm. and only talking about you? Self. Nobody likes that. Which is, are they avoiding your calls because every time you call, you're not asking them anything about them their company their goals how was last year what's going on next year what do you want to do in five years how can I help you solve a problem I may not be the person that can help you but I got a guy I got a girl in my network Mm -hmm. who might be able to help you with that Mm -hmm. are you that person are you talking only about you and your company because if you are I can guarantee that there are people in your network that avoid your calls they don't answer because they see they're like oh there's Joe or Susie they're going to be talking about them the whole time I don't want to answer that call. I don't have time. I'm wasting my time talking to them. It's a waste of time. Because there's no value. Right. Wow. Yeah. It's a really good example. Why? Well, this is kind of the same answer, but I don't, I'm just curious if you think there's anything else. Yeah. Why are salespeople so annoying? <laughs> and why are salespeople so rude? It's kind of the same. Well, I hope they're not rude. I mean, gosh. No, who's is- rude? I mean, that, uh, you don't need to be, a, you can be rude and not a salesperson, so I'm not sure. Yeah, the ones but that are But you know are what, rude. there are some of the ones, here's where, but since we talked about cold calling, because we often, when I see salespeople, it, when they're rude, it's like, well, I've got the solution, why aren't you answering, why don't you, or um, here's another part, is when you as a salesperson, or you as a salesperson are trying to follow up with a customer, right, and a lot of times I see this where people get frustrated I'll say, well, I had a really good conversation with Karen. Like we, I answered all their questions. I gave them a proposal and they ghosted me. Mm-hmm. Well, the least, like I keep being, just send me a no. All you need to do is send me a no. And so we as salespeople get frustrated and then tends to get rude. That might be where mm. the rudeness shows up because they're like, well, you're a jerk because you didn't answer my question. Now, here's the thing. Your buyers are not paid to be nice to you, Mm-mm. right? You are paid to uh, develop the relationship, right? That's your job as Mm -hmm. a salesperson. So at the very beginning of the conversation, I want to be holding my customer accountable or at least sharing with them what my expectations are of what our conversation is going to be like. So at the end of my conversation, I'm saying, at the very beginning of my conversation, I'm going to say something like, hey, Karen, at the end of our conversation, we're going to come to one of two conclusions. Either we're going to do business or we're going to decide to book another call Mm -hmm. or we're not. There's no wrong answer, but what I want to avoid is that think it over. I'm sure your inbox is piled full. I don't want to add to it, right? And Mm -hmm. just as much as you don't want to ignore it. Mm. So if at the end of our conversation, we're not moving forward to the next step, we're going to call it a no for now. Are you okay with that? And then I've created an agreement with my prospect, my customer, so that we know how things are going to end. So if I've been able to create that agreement with my prospect, then hopefully I avoid the rudeness on the other end because my customer's not paid to make me feel good, right? Yeah. I can't get my emotional needs met as a salesperson from my customer. If you need your emotional needs met from your job, or from anything, buy a puppy. Yes. They're very good so at it. I was going to say, get yeah. a cat or a dog. 
So no, don't get a cat. They're not always the best at yeah. making you feel good. Kind of really I love bitchy. cats. Don't come at me about cats. But I love cats, but puppies are really good at making you feel good. Oh, I know. They're yeah. so adorable. I wish they could just make puppies that stay puppies. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, John always says that the, only the boy cats are nice. Girl cats are bitchy. I don't know if that's true. He's had a lot of animals, so that's based on his experience. I, okay. <laughs> okay. We'll just let him go with that. <laughs> that's okay. You can believe whatever you want. Right. Um, okay. I think this is actually a really good question to wrap this up. Okay, I'm excited. Okay. Why do salespeople fail? That's a great question. <laughs> There's so many answers. And that's a huge answer. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, the so uh, there's a few reasons why. What I'll talk about is, um, there's so many reasons we could, where we can go with this. So some <laughs> people may not have, uh, why are they not failing? There's usually one of three reasons why they're not failing. It's either there's a technique they don't know, like there's two sides to mm-hmm. the idea. Do I have um, uh, like a problem with a technique or do I have a problem with a concept? If I have a technique problem, that means I don't know. I don't play ice hockey because I don't know how to skate, right? That's easy. A technique, it's a technique I don't issue. know. Yeah. Um, however, if I do know the technique, but I'm just not choosing to do it for whatever reason, mm. it's a different set of challenges, right? Mm. That would be why they fail. Now, most salespeople, not it's it's not necessarily a technique issue. So they might lack goals, right? They might lack um, it would shock you how many businesses I've worked with where when I started, they did not have targets for mm. their sales team mm. because they're afraid that they're, if I give targets, my sales team might leave. I have an employee problem. I have no staff. So if I challenge them, it's not going to work. People like to know whether they're being successful or not. You need to give them targets. So mm. if they don't have a goal, then that's a problem. Mm-hmm. If they don't know what's expected of them, that's a problem. And that's a management issue, not a salesperson issue. Mm-hmm. Um, do I not have the right attitude or mindset? That might be another reason why I fail because I get rejection and I take it personally. So what are the techniques? That bagel technique will support you um, over Mm. time in getting rid of that uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. So what's the attitude that I'm taking? How am I taking care of me? Am I getting out in nature? Am I taking a break? Uh, Am I being part of, how am I nurturing my soul Mm -hmm. and my spirit? Um, And then maybe it is a technique, right? It's my personal presence. If I have the technique, but I'm showing up uh, without any personal presence as somebody with very little confidence, nobody's going to buy from me because they're not going to believe anything I say. Mm -hmm. I might have the best uh, talk tracks, but if I'm not confident, it won't matter. So what's my personal presence when I show up? So there are several things that can impact um, why that is. And then consistency, right? There's so many commitment, consistency, all of these. There's a lot. Yeah. Um, Doing the most important thing every day. Not having a good sales trainer. Oh, snap. (laughs) Have you heard that one? (laughs) That's hilarious. Yeah, you need to get Stephanie for sure. Whether it's me or somebody else. I know, but seriously. If you're not seeking out, like people presume that um, we go to the gym, right? We go to the gym and we work out. Like you're going to, I'm going to share that if you go to the gym once a year, you're going to get a certain set of results. Yeah. You go to the gym once a week you're going to get a different set of results. Right. So when you are looking at developing either yourself or your team, um, do you say, I read one book and I'm done? Mm-mm. Do you say, I'm going to go to a half day or a full day training once a year? That's done. That's it. Um, any sales training that you want to pursue uh, or training in general, whether that's sales or other, if there's no reinforcement, I would, um, I would, I would invite some more thought behind why you'd want to pursue that. Right. Right. Because that uh, pay the extra for the reinforcement, because that's actually what's going to create change and move the needle. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's the reason why so many people use the analogy of working out or exercise, physical exercise, because it's so, it's so easy for us to relate to that. Yeah. We all know we've had probably snippets in our life where we've gone every day. We've been kicking ass and, you know, crushing it and, and then we have some moments yeah. that we don't and maybe fall off the wagon for a little bit or we have an injury or we get sick. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think I was like two full weeks. I think, when was that? October, I think I got really sick. 
And um, so then you just, again, it's hard to get back on the wagon. Like we, we all, it, the consistency is the hardest thing to do, to do, but we all think of it as, oh yeah, well, you know, I got to keep working out. You can't get into the shape that you want. You can't get that goal weight that you want and then whoosh, done. Yes. Right. And never have to do that again. It's the best. <laughs> and then three months later, we're like, shit, I'm right back where I was when I started. So the same thing applies in yeah. to anything you want to do. Yeah. But especially if you want to grow your business, you want to have a positive, you know, very uh, positive mindset, uh, you know, it just works so much better if you just do it every day. <laughs> and it's the hardest, have reinforcement, yeah, right? Like some kind of, yeah, yeah. have um, help, accountability, just continuing on instead of one hour of a podcast sales training right. and then nothing else right. <laughs> as an example, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it. Uh, you're awesome. Thank you so much, <laughs> Stephanie. Oh, this has been so awesome. Thank you for taking the time, flying all over, uh, all the way down to Arizona. Yeah. She visited her, her sister first, so she was already in Santa Cruz. Yeah. And so I was like, well, why don't you just... California. Yeah, California. So why don't, yeah. maybe instead of just going straight back home, maybe you swing yeah. on by Come on through. Arizona, because Arizona's right on the way. Right. <laughs> And she did. Me. And yes. I'm so happy. Thank you. I love you. Um, so thank you so much, anybody listening. And for all of you, those who are watching and being here, thank you so much for being here. God bless you. And just remember that you can create anything in your life that you want and you love. And just take it one day at a time. God bless you. <laughs>